Hi, Laura here. Today I am going to do a few more looks with the Living Coral Making Bean palette. Now I did a first impressions of this which I will put up in the cards for you so you can have a look. And um, this is what it looks like. And to me this was much more of a spring palette than say the peach baby got peach palette that I also did a joke of which I'll also put in cards for you and um, I'm gonna experiment and play with it my first impressions I wasn't sure about it so I wanted to try it a bit more and see what my final conclusions were so here are three looks that I did with it and then I will tell you what I thought of the palette at the end Okay, look number one with my Living Coral palette. So uh, I think I've washed my brushes. So because um, I was doing lots of Halloween looks and then sorts of dark colours and blacks and reds and stuff, and um, <laughs> they were all a mess. So I might not be using my ideal brushes today, but hopefully I'll find enough. So I'm going to go in with Fairy, which is this mustard colour. And put that in my place today. Nice light mustard. It's a bright mustard. Which I think I see. In my um, first impressions as well. That one's actually going on really um, nice and pigmented today. And I haven't done the rest of my face, so it's, I'm being a bit messy out here because I'm going to clean it up later. I'm just going to buff that out. I didn't put any eye primer on, so that was, that was with no eye primer. For some reason, after doing the Halloween looks, I'm all out of routine because I normally do my brows in my eye primer and then I go in with my eyeshadow, but I've been doing things in all different orders, doing the Halloween makeup stuff. So now I'm all out of sync. <laughs> So I've put some eye primer on. <laughs> Just add that. Soak in a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna go in with a small brush. This is a Real Techniques brush, and it's a point triple X S. The um, writing has worn off it. <laughs> I am. Um, I, I use this quite a lot. So I'm gonna go in with this brown called Potter's Clay. And I'm just keeping my eyes relaxed while I make the shape that I want. So that I'll be able to see it when I put my eyes normal. Because otherwise, see I can see that colour there. But if I put my eyelid up, I would have been doing it way down here. And then when I close my eyelid, I can't see it at all. But you can see how different my eyes are. But when they're normal, they look even. <laughs> you just gotta do your eyes different because your eyes are different. Then I'm gonna go into Desert Sands, which is this one here. The darker version. I'm going to clean up the corners so I know what shape I'm working with. Then I'm going to go in with. Wait, what do I want to go in with? I'm going to go in with Vertigo, which is basically my skin color. And I'm going to put that on the lid. And then I'm going to go in with my Australis Metal AF uh, Liquid Eyeshadow in Emerald. Okay, 
use my little brush. Helps if I hit it the right way. Then I want to draw in the crease. I'll let that dry. Now, just a little tip, and this is not coming from a makeup artist because I'm not one of those, but from as an artist's point of view, if you want to do lines, never start at the thinnest parts or at the ends because when you get a blob, I always start in the middle where, when I first start because that's where um, you, when your brush has got the most product on it. So you start in the middle and then work your way out, and then when you do your brush back in, start somewhere where you want more product. Don't start where you want a little bit of product or you're gonna get too blobby and get frustrated. So always start with new product on your brush somewhere where you don't mind some extra product and then just spread it out from there. I'm sure you probably already knew that but it's a little beginner and if you didn't know that that might be helpful. And then Go in with I'm trying to the covered in glittery sparkles. Can you see that? No. <laughs> I'm covered in glittery sparkles anyway. From that stuff. I'm gonna go back into Vertigo, this one here. And I just wanna tidy up the edges. Oh, I should put that in the wrong colour. And then underneath, I want to go into, I think I'll go into my eyeliner first. No, not quite the colour that I want. So I'm going to go into this one in Emerald. I don't even know if you can get this brown, so I'm not even going to bother talking about it. I've had it for years and years. <laughs> but this is the closest to the colour that I want. Because I wanted something to go with this colour here, which is kind of a khaki green. And I don't have a khaki green liner. And I don't want to make one because I don't like putting liquid liners on my lower lash. And then I'm going to go into that sesame colour, that khaki green. And I'll smoke out that bottom lash line. You might wonder why I do my bottom lash line before I do my foundation and it's because sometimes I get carried away and I go down too low and then I can clean it up and also I want as little product as possible on my bottom lash line because I have lots of wrinkles under there so, so it doesn't go all cakey or anything I don't want too, too much product under there so I am now using my Revolution Pro HD Smoky Eyeliner for my black liner for my waterline because I use my one more. And I'm just going to do some black liner on the top but I'm not doing a wing because I don't want to muck up this. I'm just doing it on the top. Uh, and the same thing applies when you use like a liquid liner, that's what I was talking about with that glitter. I start in the middle and then go out and then if I really dip my brush, I don't start on the inner or the outer because where I want the smallest lines, I don't want a big group, so. I can show you on, on this eye. So I've just dipped my brush in, so I'll start in the middle, do a little line, make sure there's no the glop and then join it up and then you can get a nice thin line where you want it. So I'm going to do my brows and put on the rest of my foundation and then I'll come back. So this is where we are up to, and I've nearly finished. I'm just going to put this Wonder 2 Superstay liner in 
glitter bronze in the waterline. And for my inner corner, I'm going to go in with this colour called Coral, which is actually a shimmery light green, so don't ask me why they call it Coral. And put a little bit more mascara on, I've got some on already. Then I need something for my lips, and I think I'm going to go quite um, nude on my lips today. I think I'll go in with my Maybelline Dewy Lee Nude Matte. <laughs> okay, I'm going to rethink the look. Okay, with this orange, there was too pink. So I'm going to go in with my soft toffee from Ultra 3. That's definitely a better nude for this eye look. Because it's got a slightly more orangey look to it. And here is look one. Okay, so we're on to look two, and I've done my brows and primed my eyes. And if you want to know any of the details of the products that I'm using, then I will have them down in the description box. So today, I think I want to use this green colour, but I'm going to start out with this one, which is called Downright. Oh, that's a pretty colour. I wasn't sure how brown that one was going to be, but it's quite an orangey brown, which is pretty. Now, I have noticed that I do my eyeshadow a bit different to some people on the regular. I mean, I've said before, I start wherever I want to, but if I'm just doing you know, a regular eye look and I know what I'm doing and I want to start with a transition shape, most people I see start with the lightest shade. I, I don't. I start with the sort of shade I want in my crease, not the really dark one, but sort of the medium one in my crease. Because I find with my eyes, with um, how saggy they are, that if I start with the lightest one, I find I end up with colour going too far up. So this way I can see just where I want my colour, so that's why I always start with the medium colour. And then I'm going to go into darker colour. So I'm going to go into this one called Desert Sands. And I'm look at my eyebrows and go into the crease. And do the outer corner as well. So you can't see this but um, at the moment, the trousers that I'm wearing are the same as this colour. <laughs> so that's why I'm doing this colour in green, because that's what I'm wearing today. And then I'm going to go in with my lightest shade, which is a Vertigo. Do that one there. And just buff out the top there. Now, I'm going to cut the crease today, so I'm just going to use my concealer and just last forever, even though this bottle looks empty. I can see through it, but it's not empty. Now, I'm I see a lot of people cutting their crease with a lot more concealer than I do. And as you would have probably noticed, I have quite creasy eyelids. I have always had creasy eyelids. It's not only age, it's um, because I get um, eczema or dermatitis, whatever you want to call it. One thing that I noticed about my skin is that I have really wrinkly skin, like even like the backs of my hands and they are all wrinkly. And they've always been like that, and my eyelids have always been like that. So if I put tons and tons of concealer on there to cut the face, 
it's just going to accentuate that even more. I mean, mostly I just don't know it because I've had it all my life and you just live with it. But I don't need to make it any worse <laughs> than it is. So I'm just bending out the edge there. And then I am going to go in. Let's see. I'm going to try this brush, see if it works. As my, my usual brushes are still drying. I'm going to use coral, which is that light green colour. Which again, you get everything for it. And I'm going to pack that on my lid. So this is like a very light green, but it has kind of a warm shift to it. Now, I think this needs something darker to deepen up the outer edge because this palette gets the darkest colour and personally I want something a bit deeper in the outer edge so I'm going to go into my panic palette and get a dark brown. I think I'll go in with this one here. Did you see that? Or was I holding it on a weird angle? <laughs> and I'm just going to use the same little brush and I'm just going to deepen up the outer corner. Uh, I don't know whether it'll show up on camera, but that light green's doing really interesting things when it goes on top of that kind of darker red colour. Sort of, it shifts, so when the light hits it, it goes quite golden and then it goes dark in the shadows. So that's interesting. It's always nice to play with a palette like that and see what happens when you layer stuff. And... So I need to go back and just blend this bit out a bit because it's got quite a harsh edge now. See with my eyes, even if I leave it as a half, a bit of a harsh edge, you can't tell when I've got my eyes just normal because all that bit's all hidden anyway. So I don't have to be so good as nice at blending. If I don't feel like it. As long as it's that up here is blended well. Okay, so now I am going to put on some eyeliner. Now um, I'm going to try my Rimmel Soft Coal Eye Pencil in Brown because the Wet n Wild one was quite hard. This one is also a sharpen one and I'm not sure how well I will go because my other one just it's not good anymore. So the LA Girl Light On Gel was nice and soft and that was a sharpened pencil too but it was just a softer pencil. Whereas the Wet n Wild one that I was trying is really a hard pencil and I don't like it on my eyes. It's so scratchy. This one's better. It's still not as soft as the other girl one, I don't think. It just creates a little bit more depth than that. And I'll go over that with the darkest colour in here. So that's more or less the eye look. And um, I will do the rest of my face and then come back. So this is where we are at the moment. So I've put my foundation and all my cheek stuff on and everything. And now I'm going to finish off the eyes and I'm going to use the highlighter that I used today was the BYS Highlighter in Diamond Highlighter in Energy, it's called. So it looks like this. And I, so I put that on the tops of my cheeks. And I'm going to put that on my inner corner and the top here. And I'm also going to just put a little extra pop since now I have sprayed my face. And then go over there with my powder brush. And I think I might see what happens if I wet this green eyeshadow in coral. Because um, I think I want it a little bit more intense in here. So I put some on the brush and just gonna spray that. So that does make it. 
tight, I'm going to tuck mine. And I'm going to put my mascara on. And for my lips today, I'm going to try the Seven Springs Cream Lipstick from the Sweet Talk palette from Colourpop. I've got some gloss on, so I need to take that off. And for my waterline today, I'm just going to use my Maybelline Master Drama White Light Liner. So it's just like a skin colour. Can you even see that? It's there. It's the same colour as my skin. <laughs> just to brighten up the waterline. There you go. And there is look number two. We're on to look three, and today I'm going to go for a more orange bronzy look. So I'm going to start off with a fluffy brush, and I'm going to go into hunting. what we've got so far. It's a very orange bronzy look. Not quite a bit because I love orange. And um, I will go and do the rest of my face and then I'll come back. So here is where we are. So I have put in my 1 to 2 glitter bronze eyeliner just in the waterline and I have put some of my mascara on. I went in on the inner corners with my highlighter, which I might do a little bit more of. I'll find my brush. So I'm just using the W7 Strobe Time one, and I'm going to use this lightest one here. And a little bit of extra pop on my cheeks. And then blend that out. And now I just have to decide on the lip. Now I could go a brown and really get that kind of full look more, which I will show you. So that's what we look like with a brown lip and gives it a much more full look, but it's not actually full where I am, and we don't even call it fall, we call it autumn. Um, where I am, it is spring, so I'm going to go for something lighter. And there is my look, number three. So bronzy orange look today. So, those are my three looks. Um, what was your favourite look? I am um, not if I had a favourite one. I like number two, and I like this one, which is number three. Um, number one wasn't my favourite, but I was experimenting and trying something different, which I, was, I like to do. Um, this palette, I think I like it more than I did in my first impression. So, it, in my first impressions, I sort of said you had to build it up quite a lot. To It wasn't as pigmented as what I would have liked, but I think you can actually get some really nice pigmented looks out of it. it I think it's the shimmers that kind of me that 
the shimmers go on quite light and you can get some good pigment out of them but they, they especially the green wasn't it, it wasn't as um, pigmented as I thought it was going to be, but it, it it's lighter than I thought it was going to be, I think is the better way to put it. The colour is lighter. It's pigmented enough. You can get it on your eyes well. Um, so I think this palette has surprised me by using it more. I actually like it a lot more than I thought I did. And I want to um, try out the Magic Spell palette again because I've only used this once. And I was feeling the same about this. Is my first impressions with the Living Corner one. So it'll be interesting to see if I do a few more looks with this one if I feel the same way or whether um, the Magic Spell one I used before this one, whether it kind of influenced me and in my feelings about this one or not. Um, is it my ideal spring palette? N no, there's not quite enough bright colours in here. It's quite a muted kind of palette, and um, which is good. It's nice and very wearable looks out of it, but I think I might like a few brighter, like especially greens, like mossy greens and things, especially in a shimmer. So I think I would mix it with a few more brighter colours and a few more yellows, and um, then it would be my ideal spring palette. And it needs a darker brown as well for deepening up the outer corners or, or something, because um, it, it doesn't go very deep. And it also has no highlighting shade. But that's fine, I can fiddle around. But overall, I think this palette is a lot better than my first impressions of it. And I'm happy to have it and to play with it some more. But I think I would play with it with some other brighter things and obviously a lighter thing for a, in a corner or something. But um, yeah, I'm really happy with that palette. And thank you, Courtney, for showing us the palette. And encouraging me to buy it <laughs> i don't know if that's what you meant to do but <laughs> and so i will put courtney's details down below with the video that she did so you can have a look and see her using it and what kind of looks she came up with and what she thought of it as well so thank you for watching everyone and i'll see you next time bye